Hello. We're going to be talking about one of the essential metabolic pathways, glycolysis. Glycolysis is a series of 10 catabolic reactions, most of which can go in the reverse direction. It is an essential pathway in nearly every organism. It has two broad phases, an energy investment phase, shown at the top here, and a payoff phase, shown at the bottom. The investment phase is preparing the sugars for subsequent catabolic reactions. So for each molecule of glucose, two ATP molecules are hydrolyzed to provide the energy to progress this phase. The goal of the preparatory phase is to create two glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate or G3P molecules from glucose. The payoff phase is the catabolism of the G3P. This creates a total of two ATP and one NADH per G3P, therefore four ATP and two NADH per glucose. The final product of glycolysis is pyruvate, which has many potential fates. The first step of glycolysis is the conversion of glucose to glucose 6-phosphate, which is done by hexokinase. The, this reaction is favorable, which is due to the hydrolysis of ATP. It is one of the steps which directly causes energy investment. Hexokinase has different isozymes. The most specific one is glucose. Hexokinase is found in organs which rely on glucose metabolism, such as muscle, which ha this hexokinase enzyme has a relatively higher affinity and therefore a lower Km. The glucokinase and isozyme is in organs which rely more on fatty acid catabolism, like the liver, which has a lower affinity or higher Km value. This is because liver tissues store the glucose for the rest of the body, so having a lower affinity for glucose in the liver tissues allows glucose to leave and go to tissues which rely heavily on, on glucose metabolism, like muscles. An additional mechanism is that as glucose enters the cell, hexokinase phosphorylates it almost immediately so that way the glucose does not leave the cell. Glucose 6-phosphate can't leave cells, but glucose has the ability to through different transporters. The second step is catalyzed by phosphohexose isomerase. This enzyme isomerizes the phosphorylated G6P molecule into fructose 6-phosphate, both of which are hexoses. The only significant difference between glucose and fructose is an aldehyde or ketone carbonyl group. The reaction of linear to cyclic and cyclic to linear sugars does occur through a spontaneous equilibrium and is kind of similar to a gemdial reaction. Phosphohexose isomerase will only, catalyze in, will only catalyze the sugars and their linear form. The third step is catalyzed by phosphofructokinase 1, abbreviated PFK1. This catalyzes the formation of fructose 1,6-bisphosphate from fructose 6-phosphate and ATP. It is a critical step in, the, in this metabolic pathway and is extremely regulated. PFK1 is downregulated by high concentrations of ATP since if the cell has high levels of ATP, that means it has high levels of energy and therefore does not need to create more energy. It's also downregulated by citrate concentrations since if there is a high level of citrate in the cell, that means that the TCA cycle is about to create a lot of ATP through the electron transport chain. Phosphofructokinase 1, on the other hand, is upregulated by high levels of ADP or AMP, which is a reciprocal regulation compared to ATP. Additionally, it's upregulated by fructose 2 6 bisphosphate, which is a secondary messenger molecule or a hormone which senses energy levels within the cell. This is the second point of energy investment and is the commitment step where this molecule is then marked for catabolism if this reaction is successful. PFK1 prepares fructose 1,6-phosphate to split. The fourth step is catalyzed by aldolase, which is now nearing the end of the preparatory phase. Aldolase splits fructose 1,6-phosphate asymmetrically into two 3-carbon molecules. Each one is phosphorylated. The reverse reaction is an aldocondensation reaction. This reaction is not the most favorable, but the high concentration of the reactant and the low concentration of the products pushes it forward. The fifth step is to convert dihydroxyacetone phosphate into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate so that the payoff phase of glycolysis can occur twice per glucose. Only G3P can proceed through the rest of glycolysis. This is the last step of the preparatory phase, however, not all atoms that were entered into, the, into glycolysis go through this, only the molecules which only the atoms which were converted into dihydroxyacetone phosphate via the previous step will undergo this reaction. This mechanism is similar to phosphohexose isomerase for interchanging of ketone and aldehyde groups. It uses an enediol intermediate to achieve this. Glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase oxidizes G3P. The G3P can come either from the direct cleavage of fructose 1,6-bisphosphate or from the isomerization of dihydroxyacetone phosphate, both of which were seen in the last two steps. The enzyme will oxidize the aldehyde group, not into an carboxylic acid, but into an acyl phosphate. This has an extreme 
high energy of hydrolysis of around negative 49 kilojoules per mole. This is used to drive ATP synthesis later on. 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate is created and is one of the highest energy molecules within a cell. The inorganic phosphate that is added in comes from the cytoplasm, not from anywhere else like ATP or GTP. The um, NADH is also made in this step, which has the ability to carry electrons to the electron transport chain for oxidative phosphorylation and to create even more ATP, or it could go under subsequent reactions of NADH. The seventh step is catalyzed by phosphoglycerate kinase. This reaction is highly favorable and it creates an ATP molecule by extracting a phosphate from 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. This is considered substrate-level phosphorylation since the ADP is required as a substrate for this reaction to proceed and will not occur unless the ADP is within the active site. This enzyme is named for the reverse reaction, hence the name kinase. The eighth step is catalyzed by phosphoglycerate mutase. A mutase is a form of isomerase, which catalyzes the movement of a functional group within the same molecule. The, this mutase is required as the following enzymes require phosphate on the second carbon for proper activity and coordination. This reaction is pretty much in equilibrium. The intermediate is a 2,3-bisphosphoglycerate molecule. This enzyme relies on two histidine side chains for enzymatic activity, one of which is phosphorylated before the 3-phosphoglycerate will enter the active site and is rephosphorylated before the 2-phosphoglycerate will leave. This mechanism is actually kind of interesting because the most commonly phosphorylated amino acids are serine, threonine, and tyrosine due to their hydroxyl groups. However, histidine is not as frequently phosphorylated, which is what makes this mechanism very interesting. The ninth step is catalyzed by enolase. This reaction is modestly unfavorable. It creates a molecule with a high free energy of hydrolysis from a molecule of modest energy. Enolase creates an enol, a double bond next to an alcohol, hence the name enolase. PEP is used in several other reactions and pathways such as coupled import of glucose. The tenth and final step is catalyzed by pyruvic kinase. Once again, this is named for their first reaction, which was discovered in vitro. This step creates another ATP molecule via substrate level phosphorylation, and once again, for each glucose, this will have to occur twice. This is extremely favorable and considered irreversible. For gluconeogenesis, the reverse pathway of creating glucose from pyruvate, that pathway actually skips this step because it requires way too much energy to go in the reverse direction. Pyruvate is now prepared and ready to undergo one of its many fates, such as pyruvate processing, fermentation, or gluconeogenesis. Now that glycolysis is complete, we have oxidized glucose and created two pyruvate molecules. A total of four ATP were generated by the payoff phase after an investment of two ATP in the investment phase, so we have a net gain of two ATP from the pathway. Also, two NADH molecules have been made, which have the ability to create ATP via oxidative phosphorylation or can proceed to many other metabolic pathways. Thank you.